What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company with an inline video. So I've been kind of going back and forth about where to start, what I'm going to do with these next little series of videos. And I figured I'd start with small and kind of work my way up um, to the bigger baits. I don't know how many of each I'm going to make or anything like that. Just kind of looking at patterns and stuff and I'll see what I like and what I end up sharing. But I thought today I'm going to start with a, a nice small inline. Uh, these usually run between four and five inches. They, with a quarter ounce weight, they're plenty heavy that you can cast plenty far. So I'm starting with 0.04 stainless steel wire with a single loop at the top. And again, I usually pick it based off skirts. Um, sometimes I'll go off a blade if the blade is really unique. It's hard to go off beads and stuff like that because there's only so many color metal beads that they that I've found online. And so I'm going to start with, this is a number four French blade. A lot of this stuff is lure parts online. There's a couple different places I ordered from too. So this is a number four French blade and when you're putting these on you want to make sure that these French blades are stamped and that the part that is pushed out is going to be hanging out otherwise if it's the opposite way it really won't spin. I'm going to take a 532nd gold bead and I'm actually going to put that on before I put my weight on. I have found after making so many inlines that this little bead helps make this clevis spin that much more. A lot of times these soft lead weights can chip the paint chips and it can kind of impede this clevis from spinning really really well. This bead won't ever dent or anything like that so it's just a lot stronger than the lead. I'm going to take, I've got two size gold metal beads. I've got quarter inch and five sixteenths and I'm going to kind of stagger them. So I'm going to put a quarter inch and then I'm going to put five sixteenths and I'll put another quarter inch bead. And the most important thing for me personally when I'm making these inlines is when I lay it vertical like this, I don't want this blade to pass the lowest bead. And you can kind of see I've got just a little bit of room. If I take that last little bead away, that blade's going to hang and where my finger is, is where the skirt's going to be. And it kind of, it can occasionally cause it to not spin how you want it to. So I always make sure that I have a little bit of bead sticking under. I'm going to take just a standard Z-Man white and silver skirt and that's going to be the top. Almost every inline I make I have two skirts. So I have my white Z-Man and then I've got a Golden Shiner skirt uh, Bass Academy from Lure Parts Online. And so these have two sides to them. I've already cut this one. One side is usually it sticks out pretty far and I don't really want all of that sticking out so I just took a pair of scissors and I cut them I, I cut about half of it off just to because this is going to be the bottom of my bait and if even that you know little quarter inch that I cut off that's going to mean my hook is going to be pushed up my bait and in the skirt that much more so I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to put it in I kind of flip it upside down and you're almost done. I mean these you can pump these things out really quick. I just really like the gold with black and a little bit of silver and white. I'm gonna get this bent and I'll see you in a sec. Okay so now when finishing off your inline um, to make the other loop on the bottom um, I'm gonna show you the steps of how to do that. So when you make your inline the loop that comes with it is going to be the top and then you're going to bend out whatever you don't need 
And the first rule when you're doing this is you want to make sure that on the top of your bait you leave a quarter inch or less um, to allow that clevis to spin without hitting um, the top bend in your wire. So I've got these little pliers that help create kind of the, um, the nice little loop. So we can just pretend I left this blank so that you, you're going to be able to see everything well. So I'm going to take this right at the bottom where the widest part is and I'm going to bend it about parallel with itself. And then I can take it over to my little screw here and I'm going to want to make sure that this blank line is down towards me. I'm going to bend it, holding the other one, about 45 degrees off of that, off of my screw, and I can take it off. Now it'll get a little crooked, so take a pair of pliers, and you're going to straighten that out. You're going to go back to your screw, and you're going to rotate it one, two, three is usually good. You can go four if you want. Now I've got all of this tag end, so I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to get as close as I can to that bottom part and I'm going to snip it off. There will be a little piece sticking out here. Um, you can mash it down if you want. The, really the only thing you want to make sure is that you come back here and straighten this out again and you will have your inline ready to fish. Alright, wire is bent and now I'm ready <clears throat> to put my treble on. I've got a size 3 round bend treble from VMC and a 20 pound split ring. On these smaller inlines, I mean you can put a 40 pound split ring if you want. You can also use a pliers to get this separated. My nails are always short, but you can usually finagle them on. These 20 pounds are pretty easy to open. You could put a size one. Sometimes I'll put a, a bigger hook on these, but I found that these round bend trebles are super strong, and I've never lost a fish to a bent treble hook. I've never really lost a fish to a split ring that peeled open. I mean your line is going to snap before that. Your rod might even snap before that. So in the grand scheme of things I'm not one to put a 40 pound split ring on an inline just because I mean it, it's all mental I guess for some people but a little small inline gold, a little bit of black Again, these are quick to make and they last forever. If you get a high quality skirt, these things are going to last forever. I've got a couple other ones lined up that I'm going to be doing, but uh, these these turn out nice. Junior's Fishing Company, juniorsfishing.com. See you on the next one.